Okay, so the problem is we've, we're trying some sample code, and uh, it's just practicing with interrupts. And the problem is whenever we've got the system set up, you press the button, the light doesn't necessarily turn on or off as you would expect. You expect it to toggle. You expect it to simply change state. So you press the button. If it's on, it goes off. If it's off, it goes on, so on and so forth. And the problem is that you notice sometimes it turns off, but it turns back on. That's because the switch is balancing. So there are multiple makes and breaks that are occurring. So what I suggested is that the students go and look at how to debounce a switch in software. And on the Arduino set website, if you do a search up here, then you can, uh, uh, you'll find some code on how to, to, to debounce it. And the algorithm they're using, their method, if you read up here, is basically they're going to check the button twice in a short period of time to see if it's definitely in a state that it's, it's not changed. Okay. So we don't know how long the context bounce. We'd have to look at, an, look at the output of that switch on an oscilloscope to figure it out. But anyway, so I think that was pretty much everything, right, guys? Is that our goal? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, if you want to scroll down, let's have a look and see what we've got here. So what they've got is a setup about like ours. They've got a pull-down resistor and a switch. And the switch just connects positive 5 volts to the input pin, so a lot like ours. Now, the, the, like I said before, the purpose of that resistor is not to debounce. It's just to define the state of the pin. All right. The sketch is based on the more frieds, I guess, version of debounce. Logic converted from her example. Okay. So there's some comments here which tells us how this thing works. Each time the input pin goes from low to high, the output pin is toggled from low to high or high to low. There's a minimum delay between toggles to debounce the circuit to ignore noise. Okay, we already know a description of the circuit, but they're not telling us much about how it works. All right, so let's go down into the code and see how this thing works. So we've got a um, button pin on 2 and LED pin on 13. In your case, where are your switches hooked up? The exact same. Exact same. This goes okay. from 13, this goes to 2. Okay, perfect. All right, so LED state high is the definition of LED state set to high initially. Button state is not defined, it's just declared, and last button state set to low. Okay, they've got an unsigned long. Now, an unsigned means that it's a, a variable that can't go negative, it can only be positive. And long just tells you how large a number it can go up to. Okay, so they've got two unsigned long variables, and uh, one they call last bounce, uh, last debounce time, and debounce delay. Okay, so let's see. Set up. They're going to just set the modes for the pins that are input and output, and they're going to write the LED to its initial state. So that LED pin would be pin 13. LED state right now is high, so the LED would come on when this code runs. All right, so let's scroll down to loop and see what we've got. I want to bring loop up. There we go. All right, int reading. Now, this is kind of interesting because what they're doing, they're actually declaring the variable reading as an integer in the context of the loop. They didn't declare it outside of the loop in the setup. So they're actually creating that on the fly and then reading a uh, button pin. So if, if the button pin is high, then reading will be high. If the button pin is low, then reading will be low. Okay, if the switch changed due to noise or pressing. Okay, so if reading, in other words, what we read right now, whatever the button is right now, if it's not equal, that's what that exclamation mark means, last button state, if they're different, then last debounce time equals millis. Now, I'll have to think about that for a minute because milliseconds is a function. I'm trying to think of how that works. Do you guys remember? Okay, well, we'll have to look up millis and figure it out. So, last debounce time equals millis. Not sure what's going on there. If millis, oh, I remember. Millis goes and gets, uh, there's a free running clock in the uh, Arduino. And when you, as soon as you turn the Arduino on, that clock starts running. 
and millis is a function that goes and gets the time right now. It's like looking at your watch, okay? So that's right, so I remember now. So last debounce time is basically right now. Let's remember that reading was not equal to the last button state right now. So apparently things are still bouncing. Something's changing still, okay? Now, if millis, in other words, if time right now, minus, minus last debounce time, what we've set up here, is greater than bounce delay, uh, yeah, go ahead. Which is above. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Go up if you want. I think that's Let's really think that's 50. 50. Yeah, so debounce delay is 50. So if right now minus last debounce time, well, what's the difference between those two? Well, it's how much time has occurred since we noticed that reading was not equal to last button state. So it's last time when we noticed bouncing was occurring, right? If the time that has elapsed is greater than delay, it sounds to me like it stopped bouncing, right? Whatever the reading at, it's been there long, long, for longer than the bounce delay, so take it as the actual current state. So now we can trust it. Uh, if reading is not equal to button state, in other words, if what we've read right now, because we've come through this code and we still have the current value of the uh, button, right? It, it's, it was put in here. Right? We may not have taken this if. It may be that reading is the same as last button state. Right? In that case, we would have simply gone down to here. Maybe we've noticed that the switch is no longer bouncing. And so now we're at uh, if reading is not equal to button state, current button state, not last button state, then set it. Now we can validly know the button state. It is reading. It has stopped bouncing. Uh, if button state is high, Let's see, only toggle the LED if the new button state is high. Okay, then LED equals not LED state, so it toggles the LED state. Okay. Set the LED, digital right, LED pin. So here's where they actually change it, right? This is where you change the variable, and this is where you actually write that variable out into, so that the LED either turns on or off, whatever it is. And then last button state equals reading. Do you guys mind if we download this to your Arduino and just see if it works? Can we add it to it or do the whole thing? Just do the whole thing. All right. We should be able to copy it all or just get code. That should work. Yeah, you can do a control A to copy out. Yeah, and control C. There we go. Yeah, a new one if you want or over that. doesn't well, matter. Just the, hold on. Just the void for it. Don't erase the... Well, let's just make a new one. This, this is... Sample code, anyway. But you already had the pins to find it there. That's the other thing I'm saying. Does it automatically well, it's the same pin to definition. Oh. That's why it would work. Okay, so saving. It says it's saving. Oh, you're doing it. Okay, so now it's compiling the sketch. And uploading it to the Arduino. At least we think it's doing that. TX and RX are not moving. It takes a moment. Yeah, it takes a little bit to compile the sketch. We should see TX and RX flashes in it as it uploads. See, I don't know if it calls out in the blue. Okay. So the code should be running. Let's give it a shot. I'm sorry. Are we sure we've got it set up? Is that the button on the same pin 2? Pin 2 is the green wire. Button pin is pin 2. Do you have a pull down resistor on it? I assume Actually, so. It was working before. I was ringing it uh, pull up or going to ground. I'm sorry. So I think the button set up wrong for this. Oh, it might be backwards for the way we needed it? Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Button pin 2. Well, we could go back to the Arduino site and see how they expected the circuit to be. You want me to make a few changes? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Why not? Ah, using the internal pull-ups. Yeah. I 
be all the vanilla and stuff on the ground. Congratulations. There we go. So the button is nicely debounced. So this is what I expect you guys to do. If you don't know how to do something, I expect you to uh, go find it. You're and actually trying to make sure you stay inside the 15 milliseconds. Is that what? Are you even? <laughs> trying to hit it quickly. Is this the inner operator or the inner maintenance guy coming out? Both. <laughs> <laughs> it should work, right? Even though you press it fast, because right. it's not—it's not expecting. Uh, you know, it's—it's it's not really expecting to see um, the switch hold for a long time. That's not how the code works. It's expecting to see the switch in the same state for a long oh, time, which it is. Right. Yeah, that's a lot better. So. so good. We we cut down on the milliseconds to adjust it, to adjust the, the timing, if we need to. Do I mean, when I play games, I like hit buttons fast. Well, I don't think that, I think what's happening though is, like I said, I don't think it's the amount of time that you're holding the button. I think that uh, you're just not triggering it because you're hitting it so fast. I think mechanically it's never actually hitting it. There's a little travel to it. Right, exactly. I think you're just barely depressing it, see? Unless I actually take it all the way down. Well, no, I am managing to hit it. It's a 34-year-old cherry switch. So. <laughs> that could be part of the problem. <laughs> but maybe you're right. Maybe this code is not quite as good as we hoped. Maybe it's not. 30 so 30 milliseconds instead? OK. So basically what we're discovering is that this algorithm may not be good enough. Right. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can come up with a better algorithm than that, because it looks like we found a flaw in the algorithm. So let's try it again. No, it's not uploaded yet, is it? So we're changing the uh, time to shorter and shorter. Oh, you're mashing the button now. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out of the circuit. I've been thinking about soldering it down. I think that's in its function. That yeah. looks pretty good. Yeah. All right. 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah, it looks good. Good job, guys. <laughs>